What's up, Skies family? Welcome back to our channel. What's up? Yay! <laughs> A lot of you guys have been asking for an update on my quails, aka quailians. Today, that's, a, that's an OG word, quailians. If you know really the word, if you know the word quailian, you are a real one. <laughs> use quail for is eating uh, egg laying some people eat quail eggs I have never ate a quail egg I catch Jay eating them all the time it's gross I can't, I can't help myself yeah <laughs> and they also use them for dog training uh, to train hunting dogs so they'll sometimes break their wings and quail can't fly that that well anyways but They'll toss them up and then the dog will have to bite it and retrieve it. Um, and they keep doing that over and over again. The quail eventually dies. So quails don't live the best life. So today we're going to be talking about the quails. But for those of you who are newer here, we're going to be talking about how we even got them. How we got started. How the quails even happened to occur in our lives. You tell the story about our first quails together. Okay, so our first pet ever was named Eeps. Eeps. So we were at this pet store and there was a pet in the corner of the cage and it was like kind of, kind of looked sick, didn't it? Not? It did look a little bit kinda sick. Kind of looked sick. So Nicole was like, oh my God, I have to get that. So we asked well, the guy. We said, what, what was it? Like we didn't even know what it was. Yeah, we did ask the guy what it was because we were like, so like, what the heck is that? And what did the guy say? He didn't know what it was. Nobody knew <laughs> what it was. We got duped. So we bought this quail for 50 bucks. Oh. <laughs> One quail and I swear it had something like neurologically wrong like it was way too like Chill, so we bought this quail for 50 bucks 50 bucks 50 bucks We spent we brought it home. We made a cage for it, whatever it was our first pet ever But it's just weird because our first pet ever was a quail So this is like years later now. This was two years ago and on YouTube There's a YouTube channel called in a uh, chick named uh, Albert well he hatched an egg from the grocery store and it happened to be a quail. I want to see if that works. I want to hatch an egg from the grocery store. And I was like, I already have quail knowledge because I've already had a quail before. So we bought eggs from a local Asian mart. Um, keep in mind, these are locally sourced eggs. I bought an incubator on Amazon. I did a bunch of research on the right humidity and how to make the eggs, you know, the duration and how to rotate the eggs. A lot of research went into this so that we could have a successful hatch rate. We put the eggs in the incubator. About a couple weeks later, I candled the eggs and there was veins in the eggs. So we knew that they actually were living and they were fertile eggs. Okay guys, so let me introduce you to my brooder box. Now this might be a little bit big. I have no idea how many quailians are going to be hatching, but one thing I do know is Franklin is a little freaked out about the box. <laughs> making a DIY brooder. I've never made this before. I'm not gonna act like a pro. I'm just winging it. So I want to be able to see inside of all of my brooder. So I'm going to cut a big rectangle in the whole top. So my eggs ended up hatching on Christmas Eve, I believe it was. 2017. 2017. And we had like, how many quails hatched? Like seven? Seven or eight, yeah. Yeah, and most of them turned out to be males. They're all males. Yeah, like practically all males. I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, the, how ratios are important. Oh my 
god, you guys. I cannot believe this. This is insane. This was like one of the most beautiful miracles I've ever witnessed. This was so beautiful. So cute. Oh, he just wants to stay on me. So little. Ah! What do you think, Bubba Bird? I am so happy. Beyond happy. <laughs> it was a miracle. It's like a miracle. I have been trying to get her to drink. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is the first time she's drank. Whoa. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. It's in this little shell. Oh my gosh, that is so great. Yes. Uh oh. So, ew, that tastes gross. So, I am just so happy that all of my little quails were healthy. We didn't have any of them die. The, the ones that hatched all are drinking and eating and happy and healthy and I just feel very blessed that I didn't have to, um, you know, go through any type of disformities or anything. We successfully hatched eggs from the grocery store. Now, a lot of people didn't believe me when I showed, like, when I posted the video. They're like, yeah, right, that could never happen. And what you have to understand is that you want to explain it? Do you know it? What? Why, why did our eggs hatch? Because we had an egg god. Okay. <laughs> why did they hatch? Do you not know? Do you, like, why can't you put Vanity like... A, stuff. Why can't you put a regular egg, like a white egg, into an incubator and hatch a chicken? Oh, because it's not, it's not, it's not like... It doesn't have to fertilize, fermented by something. <laughs> oh, 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 not fermented. Not fermented. No. <laughs> yeah, it has to, like, the, you do take it from the chicken, obviously, so they can't Okay. sit on. Oh, so. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> kind of. A little bit. An egg at the grocery store, like, from chickens, normally doesn't have access to a rooster because they're in such, like, tight confinement or they might not even have a rooster. I mean, there's probably sometimes if you get, like, local eggs that the eggs could be fertile and you could produce a chick with it. So, in order to make an egg hatch from the grocery store, the hen of the egg has to have contact with a male to fertilize the egg. So my quails, hens that laid the eggs that I bought from the grocery store, probably were with a bunch of males and all her eggs were fertile. And that's, so you can't just go around hatching like any old particular egg that you find from the grocery store. But if they're local, sometimes there's a possibility that they could be fertile. So these eggs were bought from the store. We didn't even know, honestly. And we kind of thought maybe it might take like nine tries, 10 tries, like it takes tries sometimes, but for some reason that, that carton we got in that Asian Mart was full of fertile yeah. eggs. And a lot of people also were like, the eggs can't hatch because they were refrigerated. That's Re not true. Refrigeration for an egg actually is a farmer's hack to prolong the egg. Maybe they don't want the chicks right away. Now the eggs can't be refrigerated for like a year. The cell will die. If you eat an egg that is fertilized, if, as long as it hasn't been incubated, a little chick is not gonna come out. It's just gonna be a yolk. You're allowed to eat fertilized eggs. The only way a chick will happen or grow in an egg is if it is in an incubator. So just keep that in mind as well. So then we had to build where they had to live. So we built, so top cage, bottom cage, full chicken wire all around. I don't know how many people are new to like game bird or poultry, but like you have to have the ratios right. Cause if you don't, it's a war. It's, it's, you don't want to see it. It's you a bloodbath. It. Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's bad. Game birds, they are insanely cannibalistic. They, <laughs> it, it's like a bloodbath. Like when, okay, so there's ratios for the birds you need to have. They say three hens for every one male, but, and we're talking about the conternics because now there's different species of quails as well. I thought it was four. It's no, to be four. so it's, it really should be like six. Okay, yeah. Okay. Because the males will mate all day, pull out the feathers on, you know, 
it's, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And when they're in a small space too, on like chicken wire and stuff, it's it's just not good. So we ended up moving to this house and I had to have all my quails like separated from each other. The males could not be together. When I transported them, I, had, I transported them all oh my in God. individual containers because I didn't want them to fight. And it's kind of, it was difficult for me to find local people who were selling quail because it's kind of like a random thing to get. So I finally found somebody that sold quails and we were like, sweet. And now this is when breeds come into play. So there's a breed of quail called Bob Whites, which uh, you can find in the wild. And the breed that I had is called Conternix Quail, which is like a Japanese quail. So we finally find somebody local who sells quails and he had a bunch of cool colored quails. They're called Bob Whites. Now this guy said that you could put all your Bob Whites in with Conternix Quails, but the truth is, and after I got my quails, I did way more research and I found out that you can't put these quails no. together because Bob Whites are more wild birds and they are way more vicious than a regular quail, conternix quail is, so they would kill all my conternix. So now I have all these baby quails, and <laughs> so, so I have to make another chicken coop run thing for this new flock of quail I have. I'm running two species of quail. Yes, goals, life goals. Two habitats that we build out there, they've been great. Okay, so no predators got in, but also two from the tractor supply has like a canvas roof. Mm -hmm. And like no one even has gotten that either. Like it's been incredible. I know we fortified inside with chicken wire, the roof, like it's crazy. It's like Fort Knox for quails. But... I went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Jay was like, do we have to do this? I dug like three foot down yeah, all I, around. You, the well, I had to dig three, three feet down. And that was during the humidity of Florida. Oh. We were dead. We were sweating. You're right by like the woods, so you have all these mosquitoes. Like, yeah, that was awful. God, that was a bad time. But do it for the quails. <laughs> Gotta do it for the quails. I now have these two different breeds of quail and two different types of coops, but I can't let my conternix out in their coop because my ratio is not right. So I find another local person uh, and we probably, we rescued these quails because this lady eats the quails. He had a lot of them though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he had a lot of different poultry. It wasn't just, just game either. He had, he had everything. like chickens, like a bunch of weird stuff. He had those blue feet, blue like footed. Like black chickens with blue yeah, feet or yeah, something. Weird. Yeah, they're rare as hell. They're, they're like French, bucks. French chickens. We rescue a bunch of hens and they all had bumblefoot and foot infections. Oh, yeah, geez. And I quarantined those birds for a month before I could even put them in just because I don't want to like spread disease to my existing quail. We finally put them out into the coop and everything was fantastic for a long time. Like we would have some birds die off here and there and there and here. Just like, it's, it's kind of like a normal thing that happens with like game birds and poultry. If you have them, you know what happens. They just like, they just, they randomly die. My flock was going down as time went on and it's, it's kind of like a normal thing. And one day I'm going out there, this was like a couple weeks ago, I go out there to give them food. I noticed that like three of my birds were dead and I'm like, oh shoot, like what's going on? Cause that's not, it, that's not a normal thing. Like one, one here and there is fine. Like yeah. throughout months and months and months. But like to have three of them suddenly dead, I was like, shoot. I wormed them, I gave them Corid. I tried, you know, whatever they're fighting is not good, right? So the next day I check on them and I have one quail left and uh, yeah, so my quail, oh, and these are the conternix. I still have my bob white. I, I would say the bob whites because they're wild bird, wild game, they're more hardy than the conternix. The conternix, like, you give them seed, they look at you like, we only pellet, they the, pellet, like, where is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, like, it's such a domesticated game they've created them to be, and the other ones are just like, you can put them out there and they'll do whatever. We haven't really lost a lot of those at all, but. The Conternix, like, yeah, I don't know. And the intelligence you can oh see. <laughs> like, Conternix wouldn't stand one day in the wild. They, oh. would, they would be such an easy meal, and my my Bob White would probably live for a while out in the wild. Uh, they, they are wild. Yeah. Conternix usually don't live too long, and their habitat that people normally give them is not natural at all. It's very, uh, like it gives them bumblefoot having the, the mesh wire that they just have to stand on all day. They're usually in small little crates. So I take comfort in knowing that my quails had the best, most natural life that they could have possibly had. Uh, none of them got cooked in a soup. 
none of them got used for dog hunting and dog training like they literally lived probably the best life they could have lived so that makes me a little bit happier you know just knowing that i could have given them that i mean in captivity they don't live long they don't live the best lives because usually it's in a cage we let them live in an amazing amazing habitat that we built that you guys have seen in other previous videos but also too on top of them living an amazing life they lived a long life i mean usually two years crooks was three two yeah it's like two. like there was ones that were from the beginning oh, going we on three yeah, really going on three years no like, it is three that's what i'm saying There's like three, they were three like three like a lot of them with three years old that's unheard of for and Anchoturnic. the birds we rescued were a lot older too mm -hmm. like they gave us like the older hens <laughs> Yeah, 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 they definitely did, but hey, they lived all a great life. The one remaining quail I removed from the coop, I brought it up into uh, my house, uh, you know, quarantined it away. Obviously, if it's like some sort of bacteria infection, I want to keep that away from my baby bird, um, Amelia. I didn't think she was going to live, to be honest, but she did. This is where I'm keeping my quailian right here. This is the... <laughs> yeah! This is her... We need to upgrade this. This is not good. It, it's too small for her. She has nowhere to hide. It's not good. So now we need to upgrade her cage. We are going to be upgrading her to this right here. I just bought this specifically for her. So up here is my tegu. You guys haven't seen a lot of my tegu because my tegu went into brumation basically as soon as I got it. It was already slightly in brumation. I'll show you him. He sleeps under this water dish right here. What brumation is, is basically a hibernation for reptiles. So here he is. Shh, he's sleeping. He opens his eyes, but I don't bother him. Put this back in the woods. I don't really mess with him. I just check on him every now and then, making sure that he's okay. So that's where my Tegu Darwin has been. All right, I planted in some plants. We have an orchid, we have bromeliad. Here is some Mammy Cortin. And then this is not devil's tongue, I don't believe, mother's tongue. It's kind of like a snake plant. I have these in um, my quail's coop outside. So I did have some extra bromeliad that I can't fit in here because I still want my quail to be able to walk around so I can't put the other flowers in here. I'm gonna save this for my tegu's cage. I'm gonna put these in the tegu's cage. And uh, yeah, now it's time to add our little quailians. So let's do that and we'll get some food and water in there for her and we're done. Here is my little quail. I decided to name her Megan Trainer. So this is our quail, Megan Trainer. And now we're going to be putting her into her new vivarium. Now we are cleaning up all the dirt with a Roomba. Hashtag millennials. I love the vivarium for my quail, Megan Trainer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think it's so cool. Like I love the plants in it, the bromelia, and all the other things. Like awesome. I'm happy with that. And now it's kind of like having eeps again because we had one conternix back in the day. Now we have one now. I mean, the bob whites are living happy and they're gonna be out. They love out being outside. Oh, they, they love it. They, like their habitat in there is so awesome. And we definitely have to do another redo. We have to revamp. absolutely do that. We yeah. need to clean it up a little bit, update it, give them new hides and things to explore. All right, guys, family, thank you so much for watching. We love you guys so much, and we will see you in our next video. Bye. Jay eats quail eggs. No!